everyone and welcome to uh, the start of a short series on how to derive the behavioral equations and do some simulations on a simple new Keynesian model and in this model we're just going to use a model okay without capital and we want to analyze the effects of various policy shocks on certain uh, economic variables so uh, the goal for this video is to just uh, derive the first order conditions needed uh, to derive the behavioral equations, which we will do in the next few videos. So in our economy, in our model, okay, there are infinitely many households. And the main objective of each household is to be able to maximize, okay, their goal is to be able to maximize their lifetime utility. Okay, so this is the form of their lifetime utility. That's the goal here. Subject to some intertemporal budget constraint, which is this uh, constraint here. Okay, so in our lifetime utility function, in this function, okay, we have CT. So this one, it represents current consumption. So that's current consumption. And we also have um, tau T which represents a shock to preferences, so shock to preferences. Okay. Then you have NT, which corresponds labor hours. Then you have, um, uh, you have VAR, eps, uh, I think this is VAR fee, okay, a VAR fee, which is uh, the elasticity of labor. So elasticity of labor so we have uh, these things inside our utility function then in the intertemporal budget constraint we have okay so we have this condition that your present consumption so present consumption so we just multiply an aggregate price index that's pt multiplied to consumption or current consumption plus the amount you invest in bonds in bonds uh, at time t plus one should be less than or equal to okay wtnt this is total labor income total labor income so note wt is a wage rate and t is labor hours as you said earlier plus uh your uh the interest income or your income from uh, the bonds you purchased at time t okay so rt minus one is the interest rate in the last pe uh, in the last period times bt is the rate of interest to which your bonds were able to be associated with and that quant that uh, multiplication or that uh, factor there that just merely represents your uh, bond income okay or your interest revenue rather, to be more specific. And we'll have another factor here, which is uh, uh, gamma t, which is profits, okay? Profits net of government transfers. So we're largely gonna ignore this one. Uh, we're gonna ignore this one for the most part because uh, we're just gonna stick to our analysis on consumption, bonds, uh, and labor hours. So. We're going to form the Lagrangian uh, function and because we're going to do some constraint optimization process wherein we maximize this one. So this is our objective function, function which is uh, subject to a certain constraint. Okay. So we have an objective function and a constraint and we want to derive the first order conditions. And in this case, we're going to have three one with just um, actually four in total, but we're just gonna use three, which is the constraint with respect to consumption. Uh, I'm sorry, the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to consumption, to labor hours, and to bonds. So let's derive that. So I just rewrote the Lagrangian here. So if we derive, okay, the first order condition with respect to CT, okay, what we're gonna do is this is just gonna be E naught, okay. Time. So we have a beta t to spread around, so that's beta t. Then notice we have an ln ct here, that's this one. So the derivative of that with respect to ct is 1 over ct. Then we have no um, ct here. 
Okay, then we have a CT here, which is associated with some PT. So we have minus okay, lambda T PT. And that goes our first uh, first order condition. Okay, so that's the uh, first order partial de derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to consumption. Then we have partial of uh, the Lagrangian with respect to NT now. Okay, so again, uh, quite similar, quite similar approach. So we have E naught, okay, beta T. Okay, so notice here, okay, we don't have consumption, uh, we don't have labor hours here in this form here, okay. We do have uh, labor hours, but it's multiplicative with the uh, shock on preferences, so we need to use a product rule. So we have an NT there, okay, in the numerator, Okay, so the exponent of nt is one plus var phi, so we can just uh we can just uh use a product rule to bring down the exponent. So we're gonna be left with negative because we're starting here. Okay, negative. Okay, one plus var phi, all over one plus var phi. Okay, times nt raised to one plus var phi minus one or just var phi okay so that's uh var phi there and if we use a product we'll notice that we're just going to multiply it to exponential of uh not nt but tau t whoops tau t and uh it's gonna be that Plus, since we're applying a product rule, we're now going to derive this one with respect to nt. So that's 0 times uh, nt times 1 plus var phi over 1 plus var phi. So that's just going to reduce to 0. Then notice we have also an nt here in the constraint, which is associated with wt. But the sign is negative and we have a negative here. So this becomes positive plus lambda t wt. Okay. Then what you'll notice, of course, is this will become zero. And we're going to be left with our condition of L partial nt. This is equal to E naught beta t negative 1 plus var phi over var phi. That's just negative uh, 1. So we're going to be left with, um, so this reduces to uh, 1. So negative nt var phi exp. T plus lambda T W T. And this is equal to zero. So that's our second first order condition. Okay, that's our first. Then we're going to go to our third, which is deriving the, the Lagrangian with respect to B T. So this is going to be equal to, so notice, okay, we have um, a B T plus one and a regular B T. Okay, so we're going to, do uh, uh, in the current period that we have, which is at t, and we need to move the discount factor by one period at t plus one. So we'll show that it's e naught, okay, beta t. Then coefficient of this is plus of our uh, bonds t plus one or bt plus one is one. Then th this is a negative lambda t, so this will be negative lambda t, okay, plus. Let's move the discount factor one period ahead so we can bring our BT here to BT plus one. Okay, then this RT now will become R, R this RT minus one will become RT. So we're going to get um, uh, beta T plus one. Okay, lambda T plus one because we need to move this one to the first period, uh, to the another period up. And this one will be RT since from RT minus one, we move it to RT. And we're going to equate that to zero, and that ends up being our third first order condition. So these are our three first order conditions, and in the next videos, we'll start to derive the behavioral equations associated with these um, first order conditions.